true. But I'm just trying to get my dick sucked. You on Pornhub, trying to watch a dude fist yeah, bust. Bitch. Trying to bring the comedy back in. Kicking stupid shit to get the audience laughing. Man, this shit is stupid as hell. But maybe this will get us both up on double XL. Shit yeah, yeah. happens. Trying to bring the comedy back in. Kicking stupid shit to get the audience laughing. Man, this shit is stupid as hell. But maybe this will get us both up on double XL. Goddamn, this man's out breaking. Spitting out my motherfucking gum. This what? motherfucker. <laughs> what is going on? This is episode nine, motherfuckers. We're back. And We're... we have good quality sound again. For once, man. I mean, we started our first episodes with a, with good quality audio. And then once we got the video going, that all went out the fucking window. Yeah. It happens. Shit happens. But we back. Butt naked ravioli captions. It's true. <sighs> What's going on, Dizzy? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Hell yeah. I'm in church now. <laughs> <laughs> AA quit, church. Quit drinking. I'm in, I'm back in church. <laughs> quit drinking. No. Quit jerking off. I saw you retired your hoe belt. I did. I mean, you removed the post, but uh, for a minute, I I granted you the undefeated, undisputed hoe weight championship belt. You're the pound for pound greatest. Why'd you have to hang it up, dude? Pound for pound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. Uh, tired of bitches getting the dick and kicking me out, so. The old dick and kick. They're using Dizzy like a fucking scratch ticket, you know? Tired. Like, oh, pff, wasn't a winner. Gone. Next one. Kind of, this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I got feelings. And they're getting fucking shattered by hoes, so. No. I'm just trying to focus on some, uh, some more important stuff. Ain't got time for these hoes. What you talking about? You got nothing but time for these hoes in COVID. Yeah. Oh, man. <coughs> well, I think we should start it off quickly. We should just get into uh, the little side hustle we just got started. The Canadian heaters, Bennis. Yeah. Making trading cards. Get yourself some Canadian Heaters hip-hop trading cards, man. Follow us on Facebook, like the page, follow us on Instagram, and uh, DM us. We might just make your ass a card. <laughs> we are it's pretty true. fucking backlogged, though. <laughs> we are pretty backlogged. Bro, I spent, like, hours the one night doing that. It was aggressive. So, we will have physicals eventually that we'll be selling, but uh, in the meantime, if you're uh, an underground artist, local artist, you're a big-ass artist, and you want a card made... If you're trying to skip the line, you know, we do take donations. That's uh, sort of number one priority. And then we always have people messaging and DMing us for uh, for other cards and shit. So yeah, either way, right. it's we're just doing it for the love. We'll get around to, to making everyone who asks for one a card. But so far, it's just we're kind of... A little swamped. Yeah, <laughs> super swamped. Although, uh, shout out to uh, Young Stitch and Junk. Their new yeah. album, Lions Eat, Lions Eat Goats. Jesus, I can't speak. And that fucking, that bonk toke ruined my day. Uh, that project's dropping real soon. They've just put out the first three singles. All of them are fucking super fire. Added into the Canadian Heaters playlist. Yes, sir. And uh, they're doing a little merch uh, album drop package where you can get the physical copy of the album. You can get uh, their rap trading cards. You get a gang of merch, tickets to their next show. Go cop that. So, yeah, go uh, go check that shit out on their social medias. Uh, I Am Junk and uh, Official Young Stitch. Both super fire artists, too. Yeah, both incredible, like super incredible. Junk posted today that he's only spoke English for like two thirds of his life or some yeah, shit. Yeah, which I found crazy. I think Italian and German. I think that's his two languages that yeah. he spoke before. From what I gathered in his music, he lived in Berlin for a bit when he was like a young kid, and then he lived in Italy. It's crazy. Yeah, and then moved out to Vancouver. And I don't think he's. I, I, I've heard him talk about being a permanent resident, so I don't think he's even a, a full citizen. Which you wouldn't know it, man. He just like bleeds Canada. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, my brother, he uh, he used to work with a guy who was from, I want to say Armenia, but I have no idea if that's right. I mean, <laughs> I could be totally fucking wrong. He might be from some complete opposite corner of the world, but I uh, gave my brother uh, a couple of junk CDs for his truck, and so they'd always be playing them, just like going site to site. And uh, it was uh, Stupid and Ugly. I know it's one project that he raps in other languages fire, a lot. Yeah. And, uh like, the dude loved it. He wasn't a huge fan of He just didn't know a ton of English, but he just could pick up all sorts of cultural references and punchlines to stuff that even sort of went over my my brother's head, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Levels Definitely a super dope shit. dude, too. Oh, yeah. 
really nice guy, man. I, he was like, Junk was the first like major artist, and probably one of the only like like really established artists in the Canadian scene who immediately when I got off stage with Careless. Like, we were walking through the crowd, just, like, shaking some hands, like, just yeah. trying to get outside. We're sweaty as fuck, wanted for a smoke. And you came from behind the merch table just to say, that shit was really dope. Like, keep working. Never stop. You'll get to where you need to get going. So, I don't know. I always appreciate that as, like, a, a young artist, especially from guys like him. You didn't need to, uh, you know, busy as hell at a show like that. But to go in uh, and show the opener's love is, is always super real. Super cool, dude. But, yeah, if you want a card, we made them for Junk and Stitch. So hit us up. That'd be dope. And uh, go download uh, the Canadian Heaters playlist, because that shit is fire. Nothing but dope Canadian hip-hop, man. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Fuck. <laughs> I gotta watch all the burps now that we got good audio quality. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it everywhere. <laughs> good thing we're not drinking. I know, I'm taking it taking it easy. Drinking some water. Fucking. Staying hydrated. The last joint you just dropped is bonkers. Feel This Numb. Feel This Numb is also available on all streaming platforms. Go get that shit. Shout out to Analyst too, man. Analyst played that joint. He played yeah, that Analyst page. always shows love. And uh, I think it's just really cool that uh, there's people sending our music into his streams and shit, you know? Yeah, shout out to Nico Wilson. I oh, know yeah. he supports that shit huge. So. Yeah, shout out to Nico. I know... Um, like, I'd looked before to, like, find just when you had played your music on the stream to see if I could look, just send it to you. And sometimes the streams are so long, I can never go through and find the chunks. And yeah. just so happened, I got on the stream, like, ten minutes after you played our shit. So, uh, that's fire. I threw that up and did a little repost. But, yeah, it was just cool seeing someone react to our music. I always see that shit on YouTube. Fucking, I've thought about doing it. It just doesn't seem like our audience would really care. Yeah. It depends. I don't know. I don't really have it in me to go review fucking hours and hours worth of music yeah i'm so busy doing other shit i was talking to somebody as silly as it is talking to somebody on reddit <clears throat> just about uh like building the hip-hop channel yeah and uh one of the things you said was sort of like if your niche is uh hip-hop it's pretty easy to carve yourself out a lane like sort of like what uh the homie kelly like what maloney's yeah. doing over at breaking records <clears throat> like if you're the center of canadian hip-hop news or even just like really cool underground info like some of the people from uh the actual like some of the almost forefathers of uh of hip-hop some of the guys he's interviewing from the states are, oh, it's crazy. are really impactful so it's like if you want anywhere to go for that sort of shit and it's not like no jumper or academics yeah. that's pretty much the home for it and i thought about making something like that here but it's like that's not really what this is this is just shooting the shit like two yeah this is just fucking just, around yeah you know? Thick and dizzy podcast. Talk some shit. Try not to get canceled. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get into some more serious shit later. I do have some segments. Like uh, one of the segments we'll be doing later today is it's not really reviewing shit. It's just a fun little. We're gonna play some people's tracks and do a little guessing game. So, yes, yeah, sir. <coughs> we still never had anyone see if they could shotgun quicker than us. So, no, I mean they've been sending in hella smoke stories. But we ain't got nothing to lay in the shotguns. Yeah. If you got videos, take a video right now. You got to set it off. <laughs> I do got to set it off. I ain't, I ain't got booze on me right this now. This is like the first podcast we haven't been drinking. I know. The last episode, we were fucked. <laughs> I was drunk as shit. Yeah. I usually sit like two or three beers on the table beside us and try to crush them all during the episode. But Yeah, you had beers, palm bays, we had donuts. I think, I think the next episode, I'm going to try to crush a six-pack of tall boys. Within our, little, within our little 20, 30 minute episodes, that'd be, that'd be vicious. I could I'd probably like pull it. it off. I think you could. I definitely <clears> think I could you pull could. it off. Well, fuck, speaking of getting drunk, man, you want to uh, transition? We'll do a little story time segment. I'm going to cut something fancy in right here behind us. Something Let's go. All cool. Uh, I want to set it off, man. I was thinking, this is a story I've told all of my homies, but I've never told it on the podcast. My like first real job, I was a timekeeper for the Ontario Hockey League. Oh, shit. I and I that. did a bunch of scorekeeping. I just did, like, shit for any league, division. Didn't matter who the fuck it was. So uh, the people at the arena would sort of give me, like, side jobs and shit. Like, if yep. people were playing shinny and they wanted it to be, like, professionally, like, they have a time clock and all that shit. And uh, they reached out to me because uh, somebody from a Mennonite church in Tavistock had a hockey league, a beer hockey league. Jeez. It was an all-guys, like, beer bush league a beard hockey league yeah beard hockey league literally like the kind of like mennonite to like bonnet mennonites you know yeah. like big beard like uh they had cell phones and shit but i don't know <laughs> i don't know the rules of that but 
these dudes, I swear to God, got so drunk. Every single team. It was like, I think like a 10-team little league of Holy just fuck. guys who went to the church would get their buddies outside of the church. They'd all come play. Some of them weren't Mennonite. Some were just there to play beer league. Yeah. And I shit you not, every single game, there was two, three fights. Oh, like, probably. And these dudes would beat the shit out of each other. And I'd be trying to get their numbers and their info in the penalty box. And it would just, like, reek, like, vodka or whiskey through the little That's window aggressive. that I'm talking to. And I remember uh, this one dude, uh, it, it was ridiculous because there had already been, like, three or four fights during the game. They'd thrown half the team out. They were, like, one player away from them just having to cut the game off because they didn't have enough people to play. And... uh these dudes, I don't know what, how the fight started. Like, I'm doing the game sheet. I'm writing some shit now. And I see another fight started off in the corner. And these two dudes are just swinging. One guy drops to his butt. He's obviously lost. You know, I figure that's going to be that. And the guy who won the fight, standing up, kicks this dude in the face. Yeah, with kick, a skate With on. his skate. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. I'm like 14. What the Kicks fuck? this guy in the face. And he's like, it didn't like cut him open too bad, but it split his chin. He's bleeding on the ice. And there's like three or four Mennonite children at the like bleacher stands. And they're fucking screaming. They're dropping F-bombs. There's a lady who's like taking her bonnet off. And they're yelling in like Dutch or German or something. That is rev. aggressive. And yeah, we had to like call the police, call an ambulance. Like, Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah, so it was wild. And uh, <laughs> it was like right after our like junior hockey team would play so all the kids from like elementary school and high school would be there like watching you know like yeah. the, the good scene from new hamburg the firebirds and then right after you just watch a bunch of mennonites get drunk and beat the hell out of each other on skates kick each other in the face with skates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was aggressive man you I remember uh <clears throat> like it was like early 2000s when that goalie got the fucking skate to the throat? Oh, yeah. We were, um, I can't think of his name. My buddy would know for sure. Me and Rhett were just watching a whole bunch of, like, those NHL injuries. And that shit was bad. I like, can't remember really if it, I can't remember which team it was. It might have been. Like, dude got his, like, jugular cut. Yeah. yeah. Sabres, maybe? I can't I... remember the team. Yeah, that was aggressive. And, yeah, they, they started, like, they have all the, like, neck braces. And, yeah, you know, just, guards like, caught and him and fucking, now. he was, like, skating off the ice and it was just, like pouring blood and shit. yeah the, he like blood. pinched his own nerve i think yeah. he pinched his shit closed and that was like the only reason he lived it was crazy super fucked up and yeah that was the other thing because this was like a beer league like these guys were all drinking and they were all you know grown men they didn't have to wear visors or anything like that so you know this dude is just like straight didn't have a cage nothing just got kicked right in his chin like oh after being in a fight too so his helmet was knocked off it was ridiculous. I had a lot of fun doing it though. That was like it was it so fucking interesting. And they paid pretty good too. They paid me like a little bit better than all the minor hockey league games. That's pretty dope. Yeah, that church money sponsored by God, baby. Sponsored by getting <laughs> kicked in the face. Yeah. <laughs> the Thick and Dizzy podcast would like to give a shout out to our first official sponsor. Anchor FM. Anchor is the best way to make a podcast for free from your home. It has creation tools to let you cut, edit, and record the podcast from your phone or your computer. It's got major distribution that lets you post all the episodes to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other huge podcast platform. You can make money with no minimum listenership, meaning you can start your podcast and instantly get ads and start making revenue. It is literally everything you need in one place to start off. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Thank you. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked up. Fuck. Do you play uh, any sports when you're a younger man? I played hockey for a little bit. A little bit? But I, I never really took too much of an interest in it. <clears throat> never. Other than like, uh, I played a lot of elementary school sports. Yeah. I played floor hockey. <laughs> oh, yeah. The elementary school floor hockey was something was else. That's right. I played basketball too. <clears throat> yeah, I was always that short kid, so I was just trying to nail them layups. I'm trying to think, uh, and I really don't want to get canceled for this, but uh, we had uh, at our high school they every year they do these like round robin tournament yeah. championship style uh, floor hockey tournaments. So at the bleachers where you'd eat lunch. Uh, there was, like, the gym floor below, obviously, and they just let the teams play. And then after, like, a month or whatever, there's the championship. And all these kids are my grade. And people would buy shirts. They'd make jerseys. They'd put their names on it. They'd all have a team name. Yeah. A bunch of kids in my grade just got white T-shirts and named their team Niger. Oh, my God. <laughs> so was, you know, 
<laughs> obviously how that spelled. And uh, I just remember thinking, like, holy shit, like, what a white, <laughs> whitewashed fucking high school. How would, like, kids. why would the school let them get away with it? Right? I, I mean, technical loophole, but obviously they know... Uh, they know the intention. Yeah, they, they can read between the lines. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, super fucked up, man. I went to a really fucked up high school. Like, this is... We're from the backwoods, but, uh... Like, my high school had to take your tractor to school day. My high school did that, too. Like, where, you know, everyone would just pull up in the fucking... In the John Deere parking lot was overflowed to shit. You'd have to go park on, like, the soccer field. I think the funniest thing that happened in my school was, uh... During senior... It was, like, a prank day or whatever. I can't... It might have been April Fool's, but I know... Or no, it might have been like the last day of high school. Yeah. But the seniors, when I was in grade nine, had two pigs that they spray painted number one and number three on. <laughs> and they didn't do the number two. And they didn't get number two because <laughs> everyone thought there was a second pig just roaming around and shit. That's iconic. So they looked for so long to try to find pig number two. And it... That's actually yeah. legendary. People talked about that so much in my high school and no one ever actually had the balls to do it. Yeah. I remember when I was in grade nine, somebody brought like chickens or some shit into the cafeteria. But My brother traded a cat for it. weed once. He traded a cat for weed. Yeah. Don't tell my girlfriend that shit, man. <laughs> She'd be this coming kid. over cats all the time. <laughs> this dude wanted a kitten and my brother's like, I need weed. <laughs> so he traded him a cat for weed. He brought it to school too. We used to trade golf balls for weed. That's pretty dope. Yeah, my homie's still got a lifetime ban from Golf Town for <laughs> just going, doing golf clubs. Yeah. Like, I got you a fucking 12-pack of Callaways, homie. What you got for me? <laughs> uh, That's wild. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Some fucking... of the shit we used to do in high school is dumb. Oh, yeah. yeah actually, uh, thinking about that, too, the one senior prank I was actually involved in, which was hilarious. I wasn't a senior. I was, like, grade 11 at the time, but... uh all these dudes bought a, a sex doll and then printed off a picture of our principal's face. Oh, man. And then we tied a bunch of helium balloons to the sex doll. And then during, uh, like, an assembly, we all fucking, you know, we pulled up, popped the trunk, pulled this sex doll out, and all ran through the hall to get this thing into the assembly, hoping we could get into the gym so that once it got to the gym ceiling, like, there's no way you're getting yeah, that yeah, down, getting right? That down. But as soon as, like, they had, like, security and home monitors and all that, and there was, like, 10 of us sort of, like, blocking off football style, yeah. trying to angle it into the gym. And uh, one of uh, the teachers at our school was the the center for uh, the Waterloo football team. Like he's oh, like shit. six six, like four hundred pounds, just humongous. And that dude just came in with the hand of God. Just boof, boof, boof. He popped like five balloons and five slaps, Holy dude. Fuck. And by the time we got the doll in there, it had like one pesky little helium yeah, balloon. It wouldn't even lift it. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't lift. And they just snatched the thing out of our hands, and we all dispersed, so we didn't get in trouble. That's funny. Yeah fuck yeah that's a classic man uh you know what we're at for time here must have to keep an eye on the camera we got we're at 17 minutes okay so in three minutes i'll have to go restart the camera so uh let's uh you want to play a track dizzy yeah let's run that new one yeah feel this numb feel this numb Go fucking add this on all your streaming platforms and uh we're gonna drop a music video for this shit man once it hits a thousand plays let's get it Yeah. Well, laying in bed faded, that's the evidence I'm frustrated and numb 
brain lucid while this liquor in my cup i ain't chasing with any juice nah, i'm a straight shooter sipping whiskey to fill the void with yeah. a void in the interaction i'm socially paranoid i'm annoyed with my own existence you're gone and i'm feeling different while these girls will be hitting my line fucking i'm finna distance and i'm surprised it i just realized it what's the point of pussy if it ain't the one you ride with 12 girls later that i never even vibe with yeah. two pills later and i still ain't feeling high yet uh. What's the point of being sober when the sun go down? With the sticker in my car, let me. Yeah. Pop a pill and I feel not to feel this now. Feel this now. And, I... and we back. We're back. That was Feel This Numb. You can go stream that on all streaming platforms. Add it to your fucking playlist on Spotify. Y'all know what to do. It's and all love. That shit's. In my opinion, one of your best yet. <laughs> At least probably your best sad boy joint. It is my best sad boy joint. I've been on that sad boy vibe. Actually, I sent it into some playlists through Submit Hub. And I got one back. I submitted it to a rap playlist and a lo-fi playlist. And they sent me a message back saying it was too lo-fi. It was too lo-fi. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? That's fucked. It was fucked. I was like... What do you mean? I feel this? like you're better off just to reach out to actual characters instead of fucking yeah. Like submit I just started doing that shit where I go on Spotify and I'll be like Canadian hip hop or underground hip hop, and I just look through all the playlists and you can sort of tell if they're real too. You know, like if you see something's got however many likes to follows or whatever, and then you look at the songs in it, like for our playlist, for example, you know, it'll be like yeah. Penwork, Snack the Ripper, Young Stitch, and then Might Slide and a Dizzy Joint there. Yeah. And then it's like, if the homie, like, let's say, uh, Typo drops, throw Typo Joint. In yeah. There. Eventually, you know, you move the rotation around, but you can sort of see, okay, this is an actual curated playlist because there's, like, upper echelon, top of the industry, and there's people with equal sound quality who don't have yeah. the exposure, and they sort of mix it in so that it actually flows. Like, if you just find a playlist with... 13,000 likes, a Drake song at the top, and then five random people. Probably not worth the value of even no. reaching out. Yeah, there's a science behind everything. I try to keep my playlist, the Canadian Heaters playlist, uh, as fair and natural sounding. So, like, I'll go through, listen to the first, like, ten songs in order, see how it flows. Kind of like arranging it like an album, you know what I mean? Like yeah. a little mixtape and some shit. But just try to keep that playlist sounding as cohesive and fucking not boring which uh speaking of that super random but i think you should do what i did recently and just put together a bunch of your singles as like a a late mixtape like i was thinking about doing a shit. sad boy mixtape yeah man like you put like on a wave by myself yeah all that's I what I, just like a little ep just a little fucking yeah compilation just I was even for. like i was in the whip yesterday listening to your shit and uh i went i put on the new joint put on our last joint together and then i was going to listen to some other shit and i realized like holy fuck i actually have to go through like 24 25 singles that i do all fuck with but it'd be yeah. so much easier if i could just, just to like, put them on a playlist plop into an album yeah because i don't already they're in playlists but most of my playlists are like four days long yeah <clears throat> what the fuck did i just pay facebook for Facebook, stop robbing. For nudes. For pictures of people's feet. I don't buy feet pictures. <laughs> yeah, you sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that PayPal. I need to, like... My PayPal is so full of random shit. Out of nowhere, like... I'll just get messages saying fucking... Uh, you paid this to this. You paid this to this. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, it's for Facebook ads. Why am I having a Facebook ad come out already? Oh, it might be their pay cycle. That makes sense. Yeah, if you're doing ads a few weeks ago. I don't even think I ran one a few weeks ago, though. Shit. All right, well, we uh, played a joint. We did a little bit of... Uh, the one story time segment, but I feel like we should transition back. Do uh, what was your favorite experience meeting uh, like an established MC? I talked about junk a little bit earlier, but do you have one that really stands out when you're doing shows or just like any in general hip hop shit when you met somebody uh, rapper wise? I think one of the coolest like show stories with a huge artist like that was uh, when we were at the LB Trice and Swift show. 
and I was standing like right on the side of the stage at Gu- or, uh, District in Guelph. Yeah. And Obi R. R. sparked District. a joint. And then he passed it to Swift. And Swift just like caught me at the side. And he like passed me this joint. And I was like, you got damn right. Yeah, you can't not smoke a joint with fucking Obi Trace and Swifty McVeigh from D12, man. That's fucking. Yeah. That's it, legendary. That was probably one of my favorite. But like <clears throat> afterwards, meeting an artist, I think uh, Mocha only was dope. Because that was when me and Pennington were still profits. And uh, we went back for VIP it was after the show. And uh, Mocha was just telling us how, like, we had really good chemistry on stage and, like, how we got to keep it up and fucking. That's dope. It's especially dope because, like, he has so much experience in. Uh, He's an OG, bro. Yeah, Canadian hip hop groups, too. Just yeah. to see, like, yo, your dynamic is uh, a group is fucking. Yeah, really it, was, works. it was super dope getting feedback like that from someone who's highly respected in the the Canadian hip hop not even the Canadian hip hop scene, just hip hop scene in general. Yeah. That one was dope. That is dope. Fucking one thing that comes to mind that's not hip hop related, but we were just talking about sports a little while ago. Uh when I played football, we uh had just won like our whatever it is, like regional like championship shit. Yeah. And so we were moving on to provincials. So we had like a couple weeks of just like uh, because we finished first in the league, waiting for everyone else to finish their yeah, championships yeah. and see who was all matched off. And so we were just doing, you know, strength and conditioning and a bunch of other shit. And our head coach, um, Scott Brush, I don't know if he still coaches football. Shout out to Scott. He was a really good guy. He ran the uh, Ray of Hope program in uh, Kitchen and Waterloo yeah. for, like, you know, youth who were just going through some shit. And uh, so he was somehow knew Lennox Lewis, like the legendary heavyweight champion yeah, boxer, dude who beat Mike Tyson, you know? And uh, he got Lennox Lewis to come out to uh, one of our strength and conditioning practices. And that's a, crazy. A huge workout circuit for us. So it was awesome. He was a super nice guy, but it was terrifying because in football strength and conditioning too, it's sort of like they try and do it like drill sergeant-esque, you know, where yeah. someone's screaming at yeah. you. So when Lennox Lewis is calling you a <clears throat> fucking pussy and he's screaming at you, like, like I swear shit. to God, Everyone threw up on the field that day. Like, even the kids who were in the best shape of their lives, like, yeah. Just pushed them. Literally. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I remember I had a, a huge-ass scab on my knee from skateboarding, and it got so infected that it's, like, I think I still have the scar there today because it was That's just, like, crazy. I'm not going to not push because, you know, I've got sweat dripping into an open wound. Yeah. But, yeah, by the end of that shit, I was, like, yeah, disgusting. But really cool experience, man. Really solid guy. And he, he just came out there because, you know, he respected our coach for – Hell what he yeah. did for the youth of our city, so. Yeah, when I was playing hockey, uh, I won a contest. I forget how long this go or how long ago it was, but I won a contest. I got to play hockey in St. Catharines with Bobby Orr. Oh, that was crazy. That would be crazy. Fucking legend. Yeah, I think like I might have been like 12 at that time, but. That's really cool. And Cassie Campbell. She was on the, the Canadian hockey team. Yeah, but that was crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I feel like uh, <laughs> I should have more of a like recollection of this shit, but it was like 10, 11 years ago. But they did do the Olympic torch run through this uh, through New Hamburg here. Really? Yeah, for the 2010 Olympics. I remember there was a couple really famous athletes who ran through. That's I just remember crazy. seeing that and being like, oh, it's a guy jogging <laughs> with a stick. You got a stick on fire. <laughs> That's 10. When I, I do that, the, I get fucking thrown in jail. <laughs> Run around with a stick on fire. When you do that, you're looting a target. Yeah. <laughs> Low cut. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's... uh. I didn't know that. Ran through the berg. Ran through the berg. You run through the berg. I run through bergs, bro. <laughs> that triple patty. That triple tri- patty, patty on the quarter pounder. McDonald's won't let you make a fucking full pounder you can get triple quarter pounder but you can't get the full pounder you can't get the full pounder no more mc pounders yeah dog the first time i ever saw you order especially out of a kiosk you got like the fucking the quadruple quarter pounder with like double bacon i was like my dude (laughs) i can put food back i'm small but i can put food back. how am i thick on this podcast man this don't make sense (laughs) but no fuck you mcdonald's you need to make a full-ass pounder. 
Full ass pounder. I'm putting a big old quarter pounder behind this right now. <laughs> me mugging the sandwich. You could just lay me amongst this to die. This would be my pounder. final rest in place right here. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, pisses oh, man. me off. I bet you it's going to make the canvas all <laughs> burgers. It's going to be burgers on everything. Last time you put fucking beans on my head, man. <laughs> I was tripping too. I was like messing with the chroma key for the fucking after effect. And I'm like, why the fuck are there beans on his head? Like it looks fucked. You know, I was trying to like tap it out. So there wasn't just like beans on the table and like all my pants and shit. And I'm like, oh wait, his hat's green. Like I took the key up. I'm like, oh yeah, this dude getting beans on the face. That's why you turn your hat around. (laughs) Yeah. One of these days I'm just going to wear a green shirt. (laughs) You can do whatever the fuck you want. One of these days we're just going to both sit down in green morph suits. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Are morph suits even a thing anymore? Can you even buy those? I don't know. I'm sure on Amazon. You can buy fucking anything on Amazon. Dude. Yeah, that's true. Or Wish. You just got to get one that doesn't, like, get too saggy. <laughs> you get too saggy. That was always my biggest fear. Like, as a kid, morph suits were huge, and I wanted one, but I was always, like, so small. <laughs> that it just would have looked dumb. <laughs> yeah, see, I was like, I don't need my fucking muffin top. Just pressed into a morph suit you know you just it'd be like wearing a full life-size girdle yeah too thick for that dog thick <laughs> that's why we call you thick that is why they call me thick okay well fuck it man i say we uh transition to our last uh segment a new segment too a new segment and uh it's called pick the plays homeboy so uh i'm gonna switch the camera out here fucking throat is just not working today i wonder if our podcast listeners are actually like yo is that Diz's real voice <laughs> does he actually sound like that they're definitely yeah, they're definitely like holy shit matt doesn't sound like this all the time and then they're like yo Diz has an annoying fucking voice <laughs> All right, so you know the beauty of this first song here, but we're going to take this in, and then you got to guess the plays for me after. I'm going to give you a couple options. Did we listen to the entire song? No, we can play both. Oh, the Sex Offender Shuffle. <laughs> that gold. State of Florida has asked us to. We don't have a lot of sexual crimes for you. you. We were bad, but now we're good. Moving into your neighborhood. You know we're trying our best to be. This is so fun. I'm Larry Arthauer, and I'll refrain from touching my neighbor's okay. kids again. What, like, how many views that has? Yeah, so. I would hope a lot. <laughs> you would hope a lot. <laughs> I would hope that it has a lot. I hope people are aware. <laughs> you would hope everybody knows. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I almost want to say that one's I gotta have at least. Like 12 million. So your options are. Oh, you're giving me options. Yeah. 162,000, 43 million, 4 million, or 8 million. I'm going to go 8 million. The sex offender shelf was 43 million plays. Are you dude. fucking good? Yeah. So it was like, it's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, the, the people are aware at least. I was trying to stick to like my original guess there at 12 million, but 43 million? Yeah, 43 million good i hope people are aware <laughs> they are aware dude did you happen to listen to that awful song i sent you in the car and... no i do no? okay good Cause, uh, is that in here yeah it's it's on the list now <laughs> you got it i'm sorry i'm just gonna put you through it if it has anything to do with Fortnite, <laughs> the views are probably through the roof Number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down. Ten kills on the board right now, just it's wiped out to made a <laughs> My friend just gone down, I revived him, now we're heading southbound. Now we're in the pleasant park streets, look at the map, go to the mark sheet. <laughs> take me to your Xbox to play Fortnite today. <laughs> you please take me to my Who let their kids have access to the internet? <laughs> Kinda hits, though. It does kind of hit. All right, what's these options? I'm going with the highest. 
<laughs> okay, well, your options are 566,000, 10,000, 197,000, or 1.1 million. I'm going to say 1.1 million. Somehow, at Less? least this version, that uh, it's the only version that I found that seems to be the actual like song, 197,000. Fuck. But on TikTok, it's got like... Like oh, sixty millions. plus million, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got so many. <laughs> I could tell though, it slaps. He was hitting them notes. He was hitting them notes. <laughs> he had that prepubescent voice, so we can hit those notes. Okay, no. Fuck, my guessing's off. <laughs> Your guess, indeed. I gotta take you to uh, another real legendary song. Some call this man the songbird of our generation. Hold on, let me get a real comfortable here, like, let me get comfortable. All right, here is a rap about growing up. I know it's really hard, but listen up. All right, you start out at five years old. I don't give a fuck what you do. Oh, 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 Listen okay, here, so that's eight. when you're old enough to buy your beer. <laughs> you go to the store, you uh, say to the man, I got ten dollars in my hand. Is this local? <laughs> it might be semi-local. <laughs> what is it again? Eight? Eight, 120, 18,000, and 2,000. I'm, I'm going to go 18,000. <laughs> Yo, for three, my dude, he had 120. Oh, for three? They sleeping on my guy. Uh, 120 views. 120 views on that, yeah. How can you make something like that and it not go viral? <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. So, I had to throw you off a little bit, Fuck. you know? <laughs> oh, for it's, three. It's not going to be easy. I think the next time I'm going to bunch of dudes just with hella guns, and it's all going to be the same. It's going to have, like, 10 views or, like, 10 million. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fuck. What, so did that's, we, what did we call on that segment again? That's Pick the Plays. Pick the plays. <laughs> Pick the plays. Yeah, we're going to do that shit again. Have to make a dope-ass little logo. Yeah, I think that shit's funny, man. If you want to send your song in for Pick the Plays, I'll try to that. guess them. I won't yeah. get it right. But uh, we also, it, it's nothing personal, you know. That's the whole point of it, too, is how uh, the discrepancy can be. You'd think something would be super viral, and then comparatively, you'd think this is awful. There's no way this should have plays. <laughs> At least it wasn't eight. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be having to play my music. <laughs> Run those streams up. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could just like not post shit on like iHeartRadio and random shit. It's like, yo, I probably have like four plays on. Yeah. You know? Spotify is different. That's a whole other story. YouTube and that shit, but fuck, man. Or even the YouTube topic page. It's like I'll post my own shit on YouTube, and then it gets posted again. Yeah, and then just <clears throat> dog shit algorithm. Sometimes I don't even post my shit on YouTube and just wait till it goes through distro. Yeah. Because we get paid for those streams. True. You get paid for topics, uh, topic page streams. Yeah, yeah. They're all monetized. So then the problem is you always have people going to that channel rather Instead than the Instead of going to your... I, yeah. wish, I wonder if you can merge them. I thought... I saw the other day, like, Typo had his shit merged. Like, with music videos and everything. I think I've seen that, too. I'm going to have to message him and be like, yo, tell me how to do that. That was a good fucking laugh, man. I think this has been a pretty solid episode. This has been a solid episode. Now that we got our mics fixed, mm -hmm. we don't just use them for props anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the Make us of, look professional. Yeah, the amount of times we had the mics just sitting here and they weren't actually uh, being, used. being used. We used them. We recorded every single one of them. Yeah. Every time they were actually running recording audio. Yeah, that's fair. But I think the last like four ep episodes, we've had to scrap all the audio yeah. that the mics got. It's just fucking bullshit issues. Whether it's like the camera needs to be lined up or the mics are on different channels. So his shit's echoing. And then if I get oh, his sh brutal. the shit on time, then it's off time on the camera. And we're back. Though. Yeah. Shit's back at a hundred. Yeah. We're at about uh, close to 40 minutes. Oh, well, we'll be over 40 minutes now that we played uh, that joint. So, I think... Uh, I think that's a solid addition, man. Yeah. Episode 9. We will be coming to y'all next week for the final fucking episode of season 1. Yeah. Then we're starting season 2. 
Have a little bit of a different layout. Mm-hmm. Switch and things up. Do a little bit of a break. I'm going to keep rolling with uh, just weekly drops on YouTube. It's been going well so far. So we're going to do yeah. that for the foreseeable future. But we may take a break in podcast content in between seasons for a couple of weeks. Record some episodes. Drop some music videos. Some other random shit for y'all. Let's get it. But yeah, stay tuned. And uh, go listen to the podcast on Spotify, you motherfuckers. Y'all already know. Bow. <laughs> Karate moves, motherfucker.